why don't we yeah so we'll start the recording and uh call the meeting to order and uh peter can you do the roll call please sure epstein present schroeder not present yet uh right. mediterranda here perot present and dornbrook here so okay four out of five we have a quorum. Okay, uh, Eric, any announcements? Uh, just that if any of our attendees would like to speak, please use the raise your hand function and all votes will be taken by a roll call. Okay, and we have two items for the agenda. Are there any corrections to the agenda? Okay, not seeing any. Uh, is there anyone in, the, in our audience members? Uh, is there anything that you wanna speak to the board about? Uh, raise your hand, your virtual hand. Okay, not not seeing any. Um, then we're ready for 7A, uh, Alpine County LAFCO representation. Eric? Uh, yes, so um, after we um, put forth uh, Director Mitter Rotonda's name, um, and John Schroeder was joined by the way, uh, it, into LAFCO, um, there was a meeting of the special districts in LAFCO, um, and at that time, um, and, and, and Dane Wadley as well, um, who uh, has been kind of driving this for our spe uh, special districts of our area. And at that time, neither Bear nor uh, Markleyville PUD um, had any board members that were currently interested in serving on LAFCO, and they asked if the district would be interested in having a second, um, having the second members uh, be from the district as well. And recalling that Bob had indicated an interest before, I thought there might be an opportunity for us to fill both of the regular seats on LAFCO. Uh, one will be a two-year seat, one will be a four-year seat. Um, that has yet to be determined as to how that'll flesh out, but that will be at the next LAFCO meeting. And the chair of LAFCO, uh, County Supervisor Terry Woodrow is also on in case anyone has any questions for her or Dane. Uh, I don't have any questions, but I'd certainly be interested in serving as the second person. But I would yield if others want to, to do that. There is also an alternate position. Um, again, that no interest was voiced by the other entities, but I didn't know that it would be good form for us to take all three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I don't see anyone else stepping forward. If you'd like to, now's your chance. I will motion to nominate Bob for the extra seat. Okay, is there a second for resolution 22-04? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead, John. Okay, I'll second. John second. Uh, okay, uh, so if there's any, this, no further discussion, then uh peter can you do the roll call oh hang sure. on uh dane has something he wants to add so dane, yes, go hi, ahead. hi everyone hi. can you hear me can you hear me okay yes great yes sorry my, my screen's not working for some reason but i just wanted to say again dane widely csda uh just thank you so much to district to board to eric uh, for you guys kind of continuing to move this process forward i think it'll be good for for certainly for the districts in the county and for uh for you know, really everyone, special districts getting representation on LAFCO is a good thing, as you understand, and uh, appreciate all your guys' efforts in this regard. Okay. Thank well, you. thanks for helping us in reaching out. We appreciate it. Uh, okay. Uh, Peter, roll call. Epstein. Aye. Schroeder. Aye. Midrotonda. Aye. Perot. Aye. Dorbrook, aye. It's unanimous. Okay. We'll move on to the next item then, our main topic for today. Oh, yes, we've been talking about for quite some time. I, I was going to say months, but I feel like it's been more than that. Um, we finally did receive the letter of conditions from USDA. Um, this is their standard letter of conditions. Uh, There's a few things that didn't apply to us that were already removed from the letter of conditions. Um, and uh, the board has already 
previously authorized me to sign, but I thought it'd be appropriate for the board to take a look through the whole thing um, and confirm that we did want to sign. As you can see from her email, she did request that I email to her by three if we are going to go forward. So I, as I think about this, there's really two discussion points. Whether is First is whether we should proceed. And then the second, so I have a bunch of questions about implementation that don't affect my interest in signing, but they're just general questions uh, that I went through because uh, quite a few things here, as Kelly mentioned, are, are different than our, than our electric loan agreements. So, so if we can divide it that way as our first questions about whether we should proceed or not with signing it. And then secondly, we'd go into questions about implementing the loan. I'll open it up for comment. John, as treasurer, do you have comments? Yeah, I think, uh, well, first I'd have to say thanks to Eric and Kelly for answering sometimes the same questions a million times in a row. But, um, you know, it, I'm really happy to oh. see this come in. I, when you look at the, uh, the terms of this, there's not really any room for negotiation. This is kind of a take it or leave it. And uh, so we can discuss the terms, but I, I don't think there's much, uh, I, don't think, I don't think they'd accept uh, edits on this, to be honest with you. So uh, hopefully we'll be comfortable with this and be able to move forward. Okay. And I, I want to apologize, I mean, as chair of the finance committee, I and mean, go to Doug as treasurer. That's true. <laughs> it won't happen again. I apologize. <laughs> but it's quite all right. <laughs> um, uh, Doug, any comments on proceeding? No, I think uh, I think John summarized my only questions were on room for negotiation, but I think you've uh, identified those questions already. So thanks for all the work that everyone's done to get us to this point. Okay, Albert Um First, I'm surprised that. Uh, we uh, receive that on the 29, 9 a.m. and we have to respond by <laughs> the day after 3 p.m. But uh, I, I agree that uh, uh, we should go forward with it. And the, there is a, at least there's a good motivator to have to turn this around quickly is we avoid a, a uh, interest rate hike that would happen if this moved into April. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, Pete. I, f I feel like we we we're already pretty much committed to, to this process, and uh, let's let's go for it before the interest yeah. rates go up. Definitely. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so why don't we uh, okay. see if there's any? I have yeah. another question. Can you remind me what the uh, interest rate on this uh, current uh, loan? I mean, on this current proposal? Yeah, it's, it's seven right on, five. I think. Yeah, it's it's um, it's in the forms but you had to go down to this page. Voilà, somewhere so hopefully here. everybody read read it but i guess 175 yeah. yeah yeah and 40 years very good yeah. for somebody for somebody who bought their first home in 1983 1.75 what a, <laughs> i think well, I, paid, I think i paid 13 and a half percent for my first mortgage <laughs> And put that in context of a multi-year inflation uh, that we have now, so yeah. it seems yeah. like a very good deal. Yeah, absolutely. There, okay, there, there is no better deal out there, and we and John and I have looked. So that's just hands down an absolute truth. Yep. Okay, let me see if there's any other comments, and let's first vote on proceeding, and then I'd like to have a discussion about implementation. If there's no other comments. Is there a motion to proceed? A motion to proceed. Okay, in a second. Yeah, uh, I'd, I'd second the motion. Okay, uh, Peter, why don't we vote? Epstein? Aye. Schroeder? Aye. Midorotanda? Aye. Perot? Aye. Dornberg? Aye, it's unanimous. Uh, okay. Um, well, this is quite an accomplishment. Congratulations. All we have to do now is build it. <laughs> so that's good. Um, I'd like to move now into questions about implementation. I have several I'd like to use this board meeting to just ask. 
Um, so first of all, the, there's two reserves required, 6A and 6B. 6A is kind of nominal, but 6B is 80,000 a year. Can you tell me what page you're on, Bob? Um, Just everybody can scroll to it for everyone. Uh, it's probably like a page seven, I would guess. I saw it. I just went by too fast. Uh, so no, you back up. Uh, it's earlier. The reserves. <laughs> the reserves here. So I just want to draw attention. The debt service reserve is nominal, but the short-lived asset reserve is 80000 a year. And I was wondering what... Can that can normal maintenance be applied against this, or do we? Yeah. So, so they define short-lived assets very differently than the district does. Uh -huh. um, so, a lot of things that we put on our capital projects, they consider short-lived assets. So, for example, shockingly to me, anyway, membrane replacement, especially considering how long we get out of those, that's considered a short-lived asset. Okay. So, when we build reserves for those other capital projects, we're already building this it's already built into our capital projects for the next five years and they are well for the, you know, projected at least proposed for this, but in the, you know, the current capital project, we have more than 80,000 of short lived asset projects in there for which we're using um, okay. reserves and revenue. So it's ostensibly it's, we're already doing it. This is, they just define it differently. Okay. Uh, good. Right. Next. And if other people have questions as we go on these pages, Please interject. My next one is on the U.S. iron and steel yes. requirement. Do we just pass that on to our contractors? Yeah, so I've, I've actually had to deal with this a few times. It's come and gone, depending on the administrations, um, the, the the president um, okay. administration. And I've dealt with this probably three or four different times, and it comes and goes. It's not uh, a big deal from... Um, my perspective, either in design or in implementation, uh, simply is added to the uh, specifications for the respective projects and the contractor is required to comply. Um, it does induce some cost, but it's really lost in the overall uh, size of this project. Okay. Uh, and then next, um, other questions on that? Okay. My next one was on the property rights issue. Is that resolved at this point, though? Yes. Um, so this is just a standard thing. I I I did discuss this with Tanya uh, oh, okay. about removing it, how it's irrelevant to us. And she said, well, we can't remove it because we just you just need to fill out this form saying you already own the property, and that's basically it. Uh, okay. But and I did ask the, that same question, Bob. Uh, okay. And then the VA ERP question was kind of the next one I, I had. Where's, remind me where that is. Uh, <laughs> I didn't write down page numbers. There it is, got it. Yeah. Yes. Um, so do we, is this something we already have in place or? Oh, we do have an emergency there? response plan in place. I don't know that we've done a vulnerability assessment, but we do have uh -huh. an ERP in place across all our systems. Um, for various state requirements um, from the various entities that have jurisdiction, whether it's CEC or State Water Resources Control Board for our various utilities. So this would be for wastewater only. Um, so we do have a emergency response plan. Um, it's covered under our SSMP. Um, okay. Vulnerability assessment would be de minimis to do. Uh, okay. It's uh, the, the contingency plan, is that correct? that we have to sh evacuate the valley if there's a wastewater uh, episode. Is that correct? No, no. No, it would, it would be different from that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then on the various insurance that are required, is there anything new in the insurance requirements or do we already meet all of them? Um, so we already have A, B, um, and C. I'm unsure that we have a, a, dis, a dishonesty policy. Um, we, we have an excessive, uh, it, it's like an additional insurance for um, uh, employee dishonesty. So yes, we do have we do have a separate plan for that. I forget exactly what it's called. It's like excess crime. 
excess there. crime program. <laughs> so, yes. Versus, as opposed to uh, adequate crime. crime. <laughs> so yes, we do have that. Uh, uh, okay. We do not have flood insurance because we are not in a floodplain. Um, it is not, so we are not required to, to have it. Um, so we're not in a special flood or mudslide prone area. Uh -huh. So that's not required. And then we obviously have property insurance. Right. Uh, okay. Then I think it's on page 20. They talk about uh, compliance reviews that they review every bid and contract. Is that? So maybe it, maybe it's item 20. This, okay. Maybe right. it's, yeah. Yes. Um, having done a few projects on with this side of our us um, uh -huh. i've net and, and that was you know i was there gosh i was there 14 years and i uh -huh. never got it and we didn't my first project was two years in so in 12 years i never had a compliance review but they i thought they require it before we accept a contract and i and I, I, are you talking post construction? Are you talking? I mean, because post construction, I've, I've never had what you talk about. Which this, it's, it was called graduation. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I didn't write down page numbers. They just, there's a point where they talked about compliance review uh, before every contract. Oh. Oh, that's that just goes through there. Uh, the, Mike Stransky, who's the USD engineer out of Davis, um, he reviews all of our contracts for compliance. Which, so there's there is a nuance of law that does come into play here. Um, they require us to be compliant with Davis Bacon, but the state requires us to be compliant with prevailing wage, two different wage rates, and they don't always uh -huh. match up. And um, they just make sure that we comply with. Basically, it goes in our. They, there's a whole section that goes in addition to our general conditions on every contract before we get to the special provisions. Um, and they just require us to include that. So okay, uh, it's it's when they review each design set of bid documents, that's when they're doing their compliance review before we put it out to bid. Okay. And then the other item they put in is the they require prior agency concurrence before making any payments on our part. Just wondering how that's supposed to work. Where, tell me where you do you remember where you saw that? <laughs> you know, next time, next time we do a contract, I can write <laughs> in the page numbers for my questions. No, there was just a comment that prior oh, agency oh, no, concurrence I know exactly before making section, any payments. Yeah, you're in section six. Hold on, I know exactly what you're talking about because that there it is. This one here was about the leases and the intercreditor agreements. Uh, well, there was one that said literally before we make any payments, we, we need their prior consent. Yes. So that then that is true. There's a format, that, and this is for construction, not our payments to them. This is construction payments. Right, to the right. Contractor. And that's very standard. Yes, there's a whole form that someone uh, okay. will have to. So the, here's, here's the process. The contractor submits their payment request. Um, whoever we hire as construction manager reviews, and, uh, reviews it, uh, gives it their approval then it comes to the district for our approval then we fill out this usda form called the 1944 uh -huh. and submit the pay request to them and then mike Stransky signs it emails it back to me and we are authorized to pay the contractor uh, okay it's pretty and standard very procedure similar to electric it, that's we had to do that we had to do that also yes. then okay so we hope for not too many small payment invoices then <laughs> Well, and that's, uh, that's the other thing, please, you know, recall that we're using interim financing too from, we'll be using that from CoBank or not. Co right. But every one of those interim financing used to make a payment has to be approved by them, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But, um, but let me ask you. Yeah. So we are using actually an inter intermediary uh, between quote construction loan anyway. So. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming most of the payment will go to pay off that other loan that we are getting, no? Correct. Yeah, yeah and it'll happen at the very end. So when the very last yeah. notice of completion for the very last phase is done, then USDA will fund and we will repay our entire interim loan. Right. Okay. And how much are we concerned about the graduation clause that 
that we can be ordered to, if there are reasonable rates, convert to a commercial loan? Oh, at any time during the yeah, that's years. on the form. They already determined that we don't have to do that. So the graduation doesn't apply. Correct. Yeah, so but it's still in this agreement. It's in. I don't know why it's not. Let me scroll past this one page. Oh, there we go. Gosh, what the heck? Yeah, the graduation was before this, before these pages. Yeah, it's it. It's on the it's on the form, which I, for some reason I'm not able to get to. There it some is. Reason. Oh, uh, go yeah, down one. But... You just went past it. One more. One more. That's weird. Yeah, see, I can't scroll down. That's, that's okay. I'm trying to tell you, but, <laughs> I'm stuck. But, it, but it, if you made it smaller, then maybe that would work. Um, but that doesn't apply to us. <laughs> This is what you're talking about, the graduation on this neck. Uh, this, whoops. There's a section called graduation, which sure normally is a, a point for celebration, but this looked really bad. Why right page 17? 17? One seven, yeah. Uh, thank you, Bertrand. Thank you. Yeah, and one more. They're page 17 or oh, no. on page 17? Oh, I'm sorry. So, uh, okay. Here it is. Voila. There it is. Voila. 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 Oh. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> no, you had it. You I did too. <laughs> yes, you could have been a contender. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. 16. There we go. Yeah, so they've already determined that we're not, right now, they've determined we're not um, able to obtain at the competitive rates that we right. want. Um, so yeah, I mean, I imagine we're going to stay, they've, they already had us look out as a 10 year. And so I imagine that 10 year will remain accurate and they will, we will stay in compliance. Uh, okay. But again, it's a take it or leave it. So this, whether we agree yeah. with it or not. Okay. And then on page 29, there's a requirement for bond documentation. Uh, and that we're required to prepare. And I didn't quite understand if we're borrowing money from them, why we have to create a bond documentation. I don't know the answer to that. Well, it is, they're gonna fund it with a revenue bond, I believe. Right, so why do we have to prepare a bond Oh, that's the only related item I could think of. Okay. Oh, I just couldn't imagine why we would prepare this, why we would be the one preparing this document. But if maybe you can ask Tanya. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, okay. So it's not obvious to you either then? No, it's not. Okay. I don't know why there'd be a, and it just may be, I, I don't know the answer to it. Um, okay. Maybe we could ask David Fama. He may be familiar with it. He, uh, in fact, um, I did have an email from David Fama. So let me just go back to it because he mentioned something. Ah, here's, okay. So I'm going to read to you David Fama's email. Okay. Um, I'll skip through the, the pleasantries. Um, we are familiar with the attachment 5A bond review guide and ready to assist on that aspect. So he, okay. apparently this is standard and he's familiar with doing it. So I would presume we would continue with David Fama and Jones Hall and have them deal with this for us. Uh, okay. But this is a bond document for Russ. Apparently so, yes. All right. But it, they, it, obviously he wasn't surprised by it. Okay. Since, since he said he was familiar. So yes, it looks right. like we'll have to do this. Uh, okay, good. Those are my questions. Let me see if there are other questions from the board about implementation. Well, there, there's another comment that was in Tanya's uh, email to us, which was as indicated in the letter of commitment, the LOC does not constitute loan approval. The applicant should not make any announcement on being selected for this funding until this selection has been announced by the agency. So I uh, right. I guess we just have to hold off a bit, right? 
Yes, I mean, it, it, well, yes, we should hold off, but we're talking holding off in a matter of days, not a not much longer than that. Because as soon as this board meeting's over, I will print, I will print and sign all the forms and email them to her, and then overnight them as well. And um, they want to have the funding commitment and and sign before April first, which is you know two days. Yep. So they want to do it tomorrow, so I imagine after that we should we will be able to announce make any announcements we 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 decide probably a good newsletter article since we're going to be coming up on april 1st too yeah. unless jess has already done it i'm getting close to finishing but i can add an article if needed probably just have one ready to go okay uh any other questions Okay, not hearing any. Is there any other discussion topics the board wants, a board well, member wants to bring up? General basic, discussion. I would like to cl have clarification on the next step. So once we sign, get approved officially, then you turn around on this other company that is going to bridge the loan. Is that correct? And how fast do we do that? Yes, yeah, so we'll have to work with USDA on that. Um, generally, they they well they do have um, they want to have approval over any interim financing. Generally, it follows in construction, but since we aren't even in design completely yet, um, it's going to fall. We need the money to bridge our design phase. So um, we'll be working with USDA and um, Stiefel to get that interim financing in place, um, so we can start start taking draws and start doing. The design work for the multiple phases and then and i and correct me if i'm wrong john but i know they did put a limit on it but they basically said you can have x number of draws and they expected it to be a certain amount we, we provided a rough table of draws you know a million here a million there 1.5 here um, as on a rough schedule and i think that was we had to take a minimum amount with a maximum amount of times correct john yeah, there was an initial drawdown. Um, I don't remember the exact amount. It was, I think it was pretty substantial though, like maybe a million dollars or something yeah. like that. And that will, we will also be going for uh, reimbursement for our preliminary engineering report and all the sunk costs from staff and, and uh, Stiefel and our bond council to this point, which will probably be our first uh, payment application to USDA. Bob, I have one other question that's unrelated to the wastewater <clears throat> stuff that's related to the Alafco. Uh, okay. okay, go ahead, yeah. Uh, Eric, you made a comment that it would be poor form to have all of our, all KMPD and all three of the seats, including the alternative, alternative seat that is of still outstanding. Um, do the other districts have representatives willing to do that? And if not, what would we then take a step to nominate a third person once we find out that they don't have an alternative? Yeah, so I spoke with both general managers from the other two districts um, and they both thought that they might be able to convince one of their board members to be an alternate. And so I was giving them leeway to follow that path before we stepped on any toes. But if they, but, and if they were to not propose anyone, then we at that time would have an option to put a third person forward. Is that the idea? That is correct. Okay. Yes. Thanks. I mean, we could do it now to, to be perfectly candid, but I did want to give them the opportunity because their boards don't meet like we do. I mean, one of their boards meets, I don't know, semi-annually. Um, and I, I don't know if Terry can elucidate bear, but I think they meet, they think they meet monthly. They might meet less, but I mean, hold on. Okay. Uh, yeah, Terry's going to comment. Terry, go ahead and unmute. Yeah. You're unmuted, Terry. You're good to go. Yeah, uh, they meet monthly. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yes, we so can. Bear meets monthly. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Are there any other any other general discussion topics? 
Okay, not hearing any. Then uh, we'll... I'd like, oh, um, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bertrand. Yeah. Uh, want to discuss about uh, the next board meeting and format, basically. Uh, I'm, I've not heard, and I'm, I'm, you may be confirming or not, but that uh, emergency state for COVID-19 would be extended past March 31st. Uh, so that means we need to revert to the uh, in-person meeting for the next time. Is that correct? Yes, if it's not extended, that, as Jess's report um, detailed last board meeting and was voted upon, if, if it doesn't revert, we go, or if it doesn't get extended, we go back to the old way. At this point, we don't expect it to be extended. No. Is that correct? So I'm, after tomorrow, that would be confirmed. Yes. Correct. I've been searching every day for this last week to try to figure out if he will extend it or not. Um, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, but we won't really know until midnight on April, on March 31st. So well, my, my next okay. question is how do we board member know for a fact that before in advance that we have a quorum in place uh, at, in Kirkwood. So what is the, the process so we can decide if we do it? Uh, how soon do we need to notify if we want to do it by Zoom and stuff like that? As, as soon as possible. Um, again, going back to the old practices, it's incumbent on the board members to notify Jess and myself if they won't be available for any reason. Doug has already notified Jess and myself. Um, that he will be appearing remotely, though he may be in the service area. Um, that remains to be seen. Um, so, you know, timely notification okay. is the incumbent on the board members, not on staff. Okay. And I'll be there. I'll be there in person. Uh, I will be sitting outside the CSB for my uh, in a chair that I bring. So, perfect. Okay. <laughs> uh, John, do you know already? I, I expect to be at the meeting. Okay. Same for and, me. Yeah, and Peter? Yeah, I'll be there. Okay. I'll let everybody know first thing the morning of April 1st, what happened at midnight on March 31st, so you can okay. proceed accordingly. Our plan will be four in person and Doug very, very close. So, so my next- In the service area, that's the same, yeah. Yeah, okay. My next, next question, yeah. My next question is not for the board meeting, but for the committee meeting. So can we still be offline without going through that whole process? Yes, and that would be the recommendation of staff as we stay 100% Zoom on the committee meetings. We get way more participation that way. And it's okay. much, it, setting up the Zoom hybrids is atrociously complicated. Um, and as Pete will attest, when we shared a microphone, it, uh, there's always some snafus. So I would recommend that all committee meetings remain Zoom and I, that's permissible. I, I, I support that. I think actually the not being able to see all the attendees is also another drag for, for good communication. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, the, conference, to... the conference line was a nightmare. People talking over each other and you could hear half of it when somebody would interrupt and Zoom, you don't really have that issue, which is great. Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, so to summarize, we go revert to uh, normal practice for the board with uh, meeting with uh, attendee uh, expected for the board members and for committee, we stay on full Zoom, not uh, hybrid. Right. Thank you. Okay, uh, good. Anything else? All right, then I will adjourn this meeting and we'll see everybody Friday, April 8th at two o'clock. Thank you all, and congratulations to staff Congrats, for completing guys. this. Nice, Thank nice you. work. Thanks for Good all the hard work. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.